do it. Second best of two. The clan war is over. If any team wins four maps, because uh, obviously then you would win at a minimum four to two, maybe five one six zero. If it is three to three, we go to an ace match. With a 2-0, we get our first official W of the regular season. Top left side, hailing from Poland. Lived in Germany, by the way, for a while. Near Stuttgart, I believe. But he's back in Poland. It is Christiane, representing the Starlight Twinkle. And in the bottom right side, it is the one and only beautiful, tall, handsome, muscular, great posture, Basilisk Showtime. Showtime. <laughs> ah, yo showing up. My golden boy is showing up for Die Mauer. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, very cool to have Showtime. Uh, not just on our roster, but to overall see Showtime in WTL code S. I was really hoping that somebody would team up with Gabe as well, because I kind of feel the players like Gabe and Showtime should be a part of the biggest team league there is. Why is it not big? It could be big, but big is just a one-man team. So we decided to give some props to Showtime. But if you guys look closely, you guys can see a little big logo next to the Bastardus logo. We could have gone for Basilisk and Big, but we went for Basilisk and Showtime. But here you guys can see. Little big logo. They are out there. They are with us. Busy weeks, but I can't miss this. Thank you for stopping by, Medi. We actually only talked with Showtime. I don't really mind sharing that with you guys. Uh, since Yona would not always be available, we looked for our options and basically everyone was a fan of the idea of reaching out to Showtime. I was a fan of it. Our management was a fan of it. Sarah was a fan of it. Trigger loved it. Rainer loved it. Everybody gets along well with Showtime. He just has a great standing in the community. He's always very kind and polite. He's a great player, so... He was kind of our first option. We reached out to him. He said yes immediately. And that's how the happy marriage was formed. Mm. Mm. We didn't really do a lot of shopping. Showtime was our first choice. And we came to an agreement and understanding almost immediately. He was down. We were down. <laughs> it doesn't always have to be complicated. We know that Christiana is a massive fan of spamming a lot of stalkers and zealots in this matchup. That's something that I think a lot of you guys know. That's something that Showtime knows as well. PvP is always a bit tricky and scary, but I think Showtime has a very good understanding of how Christiana likes to play this matchup. One thing that I have not mentioned yet, since this is the first time that I'm actually covering WTL Code S, is that something has changed a little bit in the prize money distribution. There is now money on the line for every single map you play in the regular season. It is 250 RMB, which translates to roughly $30. But there is a chance that they will increase it. They are kind of vague about it, but the TLDR is that they expect some bonus to come in. And then the map wins will increase from 250 RMB to 500 RMB potentially. So then it's like 60 bucks per map, which is actually pretty serious money. You know, a lot of these games are over at like 7-8 minutes, so... 8 minutes for 60 bucks? That's not too bad. Why isn't it Big Basilisk Bec instead of Basilisk GGS? Because we like Basilisk GGS. That's why. <laughs> Thank you to Sami Lux for the 95 months. On Battle.net we are Basilisk GG. So now we are Basilisk GG and Showtime. Good job, Rainer. You actually played really well, mate. That Korea arc, it's starting to show. The ZVT is looking good. The ZVZ is looking good. This Rainer kid might actually go somewhere, guys. The ZVP looked pretty good against Mana. I really enjoyed that Golden Aura game. 
I thought that was very exciting. I thought it was very clutch as well, because that was not easy. I always like it if Reyna wins his EVP and he has to work for it. And at this moment he has to work for all of them, so it sparks a lot of joy to me. Cristiano is going to go for the 1-2 punch of a couple of Stalkers at the third. And he's going to try to shade two adapts in the natural. It's a classic move in PvP. He's finding some damage here. So it's definitely not bad. Should be able to get at least one more if he targets correctly. Maybe two more. No, does not get two more. Three probes in total. A bit of lost mining time for two adapts. I would say that's somewhat even. Wait, Cristiano is taking gases? What the hell? Who is this guy? Are you sure that this is live, guys? <laughs> Am I witnessing Cristiano just casually taking a couple of additional assimilators? Excuse me, I want my money back. I have never seen this. Normally, Cristiano is on nine bases before he takes his third gas. <laughs> That gives me the idea that he's gearing up for a massive Stalker Immortal Zealot Archon attack. Other than that, I can't really explain this. Cristiano is not a very big double robo robo bay player. But I can absolutely see him just drop a temp uh, Templar Archives and go for Stalkers and Archons. Cristiano up for workers. He's got to be happy with that. And the fourth base was a tiny bit quicker. There is the Templar Archives of Christiane. I bet Showtime is surprised that he hasn't seen 28 Zealots yet. I'm surprised, so I'm sure that Showtime is surprised too. Hmm. This is where you click on that little icon in the top right. It's like, I am playing Christiane though, right? <laughs> there are a few Zealots in the mix already for Christiane. Not all that many. War Prism on the production tab would be sick if Shotem can somehow snipe this prism because Christiana absolutely is gearing up for a move out. Plus one is done now. Shotem has already been working on plus two for a little while, but it's still gonna take quite some time before this kicks in. This is going to be a little bit scary for D Mauer. I would be lying to you guys if I don't tell you that I think this is scary. Christiana's attack is going to be big, it's gonna hit like a Volvo truck. And those Swedish trucks, guys, are built different. There's a lot of them in Germany and Poland. Oh. Yeah, the Immortals are terrifying. Archons, in a weird way, are actually pretty good in some of these scenarios. Not because of the damage they deal, but they make it impossible for your opponent to make Zealots. So then you kind of have to go Stalkers only. But it takes a long time for Stalkers to chew their way through a bunch of Archons. This is not the best fight for D Mauer. Uh-oh. Showtime is potentially off to a rough debut here in the WTL code S. As Christiana has got a terrifying army. He's got a war prism in the natural. He's going to warp in a bunch of zealots. This is going to be very difficult. Showtime is going to have to live up to the nickname that we gave him a long time ago. Force fields will be broken because Christiana has built the first Archon since the summer of 2018. And he's going to bulldoze his way through these. As Showtime blinks forward on top of all of these immortals. But I have a hard time believing that this is going to end well. The Polish Protoss, Christiana for Starlight Twinkle. He's actually going to take the 1-0 lead here. Well done. I mean, he's surprising everyone here. He took gases. GG gets called. Starlight Twinkle, Christiana gets the point on the board. And Showtime will not pick up the first 250 RMB. Ah, good performance by Christiana. He didn't do a whole lot, but... He just kind of said, oh, this is my game plan. I'm going to make a couple Stalkers. I'm going to expand. I'm going to try to find a tiny bit of economic damage with the two Adepts and the Stalker Poke in the third. And then I'm going to surprise my opponent by actually taking gases and finding a way to break force fields. 2024 Christiana hits different. Also, by the way, I think his debut in the WTL Code S because Christiana was a one-man army for a long time representing... Blazer Esports, but I think he was the only really good player on the team, so they never made it into WTL. Yeah, nice for him. Nice for the young man from Poland. Rough for us, but no need to panic just yet. Hmm. 
How is Showtime's apartment so nice? I feel like he's been in that place for a long time. I think he probably lives with his family. Now, do you guys think Showtime lives alone? It's nice. He probably lives alone, actually. I feel like he's been living there for a long time. Do you think he texted Showtime after the game? You mean a cheeky battle net whisper? No. I don't think that Cristiano has gone for a cheeky battle net whisper. That's only what he does after ladder games. He lives with his family, but they build him like his own wing. Ah, okay, so he kind of like lives with the family, but he still has his own plays and he can go in and out without anybody noticing. Those are cool setups. Yeah. Did you ever visit him, Mark? Or he just told you? told you okay that looks nice it looks very clean cute all right let's do it let's at least get a one one here then i think we are still on pole position to just bring this one home top left side taking the 1-0 lead on his debut in wtl code as it was christiana and bottom right side representing basilisk and himself and big it's showtime by the way rainer uh or mark where does Nikita live right now? Because he's never told me. I know that I saw I saw a little video of it and you told me a few things, but you never told me where it is, Rainer. Is he still close to me or does he live far away? He lives in Tilburg. Ah, okay. he went to Diego's town. Really? Okay, cool. It's a bit further away from me, unfortunately, but that's nice. I think Tilburg is a pretty nice place to live. That makes me happy for Nikita. How old is Showtime, I believe? As he's 30? I don't think that's correct. Is he already 30? I thought Showtime was like 28 or 27. He is 30? Okay. Damn. Born in 1994. Yeah. You guys are correct. I mean, he has been around for a long time, but I still. He looks a bit younger than 30. I would have guessed he's 27 or 28, not 30. Hm. Yeah, I just checked uh, Illegal Act instead of Liquid Video. You are correct. Cristiano is still proper young though, I know that much. Probably 21, 22, something among those lines, or not even. Cristiano is a proper youngster. Shotham is going to open up with the Adepts. This is something he's done pretty frequently over the last few months. Six Adept, eight Adept opening into uh, many Oracles. Once in a while, it's just two Adepts into Stalkers, or two Adepts into Stalker Sentry, but I feel most of the time, if Showtime opens up with Adepts, he will go for many Adepts. And he will just keep on looking for that right moment to shade in and find the economic damage that he's dreaming of. Christiana turned 20. What? Youngster. Practically a baby. Hmm. Christiana actually gonna go for Stargate as well. I think this would be a sick moment for Christiana to play Phoenix. I'm obviously not hoping for that. Showtime will pretty much never ever play Phoenix here. Like. A bunch of adapts into a phoenix those are just units that don't work incredibly well together christiana could theoretically go for a phoenix if he's just banking on the fact that showtime is gonna go adapt oracle phoenixes can be a very good counter against oracles It would make sense to me. I'm actually really curious. If it will be an Oracle, will it be a Phoenix? He goes Oracle himself. The nice thing, I guess, for Cristiano about playing Oracles here is that Showtime is making a lot of Adepts and Adepts don't shoot up. I think you would make your own life a little bit easier if you would play Phoenix rather than Oracle, but okay. What he could use is the Oracles to activate Pulsar Beam and gun down the Adepts of Showtime and then just deal with the Oracle of Showtime with his own Stalkers.
In 2004, you were 17. Jeez. You gotta be so old, mate. Sounds like you're very old. What are you, born in like 1987? You absolute dinosaur. <laughs> gotta feel terrible to be that old. First two oracles grab a couple of probes. The adepts have shaded into the natural. They're gonna grab a few more. So this is something that we can work with. But it's not as good as you guys may think it is. There are moments where killing five probes is amazing. But killing five probes, losing a bunch of adepts, being down in the stalker numbers, having to deal with the oracle of your opponent. It's a little bit too early to celebrate if you're cheering for Showtime or Basilisk. I was joking, guys. I am born in 87. That's why I was joking. It took a little while for me for it to actually sink in. I was like, man, if you were if you 17 in 2004, you must be very old. And then I did the math and I was like, wait a minute. I was 17 in Cristiano is the one who's going to go up to three bases. Showtime says, you know what? That sounds like a good plan. Let's go ahead and do that too. So both players are just playing relatively standard in that regard. The Oracle of Cristiano has not really accomplished a whole lot yet. Hmm? This is one more reason why I kind of thought it would be easier for Cristiano to play this game if he would have gone Phoenix. You don't have to go many Phoenixes, but I think going like two or three Phoenix... I think 3 Phoenix is a very sweet number to still have enough potential to lift a couple probes on the other side of the map and kill them and then give yourself a very easy time to deal with these Oracles of Showtime that are a pretty, pretty costly investment as well. And the Phoenix are also very useful in dealing with Adapt Harass because then you can actually lift them, they cannot shade away. Oh. Hmm. Who's ahead? I would say in the end now Showtime is a little bit ahead but it's obviously very close. This is a very close and competitive game but I'd give a tiny advantage to Showtime, but not much more than that. Mm. I'm actually surprised to see Showtime's army show up here. He was casually working on the stasis trappy! Ho 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 ho! That's nice. I don't think that Showtime can quite blink forward and take the fight near a battery, but... Still a nice stasis trap. He needs to be careful there with his own stalkers coming in from the right. I'm sure that Showtime thought about it for a split second. If Cristiano did not have a shield battery at the third, that could have been very, very costly. Because then I do think that Showtime YOLO blinks forward and takes that fight. But the battery is something you truly have to respect. I think it's nice to see that Showtime is playing a patient game so far. Of five workers. I think these are the kind of PvPs that Showtime loves. As Christiana has put almost all of his stalkers at the triangle to deal with these stalkers of Showtime. And that kind of opens the doors for these oracles of the early game to show up one more time. Activate Pulsar Beam. Zap down six workers. Interesting revelation there by uh, Christiana. <laughs> Don't know if that was necessary, guys, but he did it. And Sure. It landed on at least one of them. Showtime casually walks up this ramp on the left side of Golden Aura, gets a cancel on the fourth base. None of these things are massive, but it does really start adding up. Showtime probably already pretty happy with how most of the things have gone in this game, and just finding tiny victory after tiny victory makes you feel really good about yourself. And it's going to allow you to play with all that swagger and confidence that you need in a PvP.
The 2004 euros were terrible, no need to be old enough to remember that. Weren't those are super awesome? No, wait, I'm thinking of 2008. Where were the euros of 2004? Was that the one in Portugal? Netherlands made semi finals. And we lost on penalties. Yeah. We beat Sweden in the quarterfinals on penalties, and then we lost against Portugal. No, wait, we didn't lose on penalties, we just got owned. I take it back, sorry. We were actually kind of bad in that Euro. But somehow made semi finals. Even when the Dutch are bad, we are still so much better than Germany. It's amazing. Cristiano is at has got a couple of probes in the bottom side of the map. Showed them, says, all right, mate, you get five workers. Now it's my time to shine again as he walks up this ramp one more time. Now you're thinking of the World Cup game, you Thermal. Netherlands and Portugal have a very long lasting history and a lot of very spicy matches. Yeah, the, the very spicy one with all the red cards and yellow cards was at the World Cup of 2006, I believe, in Germany. I watched that one in the city in Rotterdam at the ski hut. <laughs> That's very funny to Dutch people, I think. A forward blink by Showtime as he gets the first Immortal, he gets the second Immortal, but I do think we truly need to respect that battery overcharge there, by the way. It's a little bit surprising to see Showtime be the one that is this heavy on gateway units. If I didn't know any better, I would think that Cristiano is Showtime, and Showtime is Cristiano. So it's actually Cristiano who is enjoying a pretty nice army here of Archons and Immortals. While well, Showtime is playing with a relatively basic army, normally the tables are turned. We do have a Stasis Trappy in the back. Stalkers blink forward, not far enough to activate that Stasis Trap. The Archons of Christiana didn't really participate in the fight. They finally make their way through the front line. There are a lot of Zealots, by the way, on the left side of Christiana that are stuck behind his army. And I'm very happy about that, as we do have a tiny Stasis Trap to fall back to. That wasn't really all that hot, to be honest, for Showtime, guys. Christiana is playing really good. Showtime now realizing that playing pure Zealot Stalker is probably not quite the way to go here against Cristiano, who's just a brand new man over here in the summer of 2024, as he has discovered how to select BA, take gases, and build well advanced and high tech armies. Cristiano is an absolute animal. Hmm? Where's the original stream from? If you mean streaming platform, I'm currently watching on YouTube. I earlier had Twitch open, but the Twitch stream of the WTL guys is just very laggy. So the YouTube one is slightly better, but... I know it's not perfect, sir. I apologize, but this is the best that I can do. I still think it's always fun to watch the games. It is up to us guys to make it a fun time together. I didn't think that this was going to be a steamroll, but I did kind of expect a 2-0 showtime. Maybe a 1-1. Cristiano 2-0 would be a very big upset. The Showtime is incredibly solid in PvP. And obviously we are not there yet as we have a forward blink. But this time around Showtime also has a couple of Archons. And that's where the force fields are not all that intimidating anymore. This is a great fight for D Maurer as he blinks forward. Snipes that War Prism. And just like that guys. I believe this is Showtime doing Showtime things. Cristiano is in all sorts of trouble. All of these Immortals will start falling. Once the Zealots get on top of it. Lovely snipe on that prism there, guys. Great job by Showtime, and that will do it. Wow, what a fight. Just like that, guys. Just like that. <laughs> Showtime, let's go with a deep breath. He's like, Phew. That could have been slightly better, but we'll take the 1-1. One, one. That means one point for Starlight Twinkle, one point for Basilisk and Showtime, and we are now on match point. Gotta say, though, guys, good performance by Cristiano, right? Gotta give him kudos there. He's the underdog. Even if I'm rooting for my boys and my team, I gotta say, I think Cristiano played a strong series there. And I feel like he should be pretty proud of that. 1-1 uh, one, one draw is the correct outcome. We have, last but not least, our boy Trigger versus Chem. A little Latin versus North American action. Or I guess it's an all North American best of two. <laughs> 